Hello everyone and welcome to my emergency preparedness guide. In this video, we will be discussing the importance of being prepared for emergencies and how to create a plan to keep yourself and your loved ones safe. This is especially critical for now, considering how World War III has already started. It's incredibly important to stay ahead of the curve and get your preps in order if you haven't started yet, because time is short. Remember back when toilet paper, paper towels, and hand sanitizer were all bought out because of a panic over a certain virus? That will pale in comparison when the realization starts to dawn on people that we're incredibly close to nuclear weapons being leveraged in an attempt to gain an advantage. Bear in mind that the World Health Organization recently started recommending that people start stocking up on items that will help survive a radiological event. That's their backhanded way of saying we're on the verge of nuclear war. First and foremost, it is important to understand that emergencies can happen at any time and anywhere. They could be natural disasters such as hurricanes, tornadoes, and earthquakes, or man-made emergencies such as power outages, terrorist attacks, chemical spills, or nuclear war. The key to staying safe during an emergency is to be prepared. This means having a plan in place and knowing what to do in the event of an emergency. The first step in creating a plan is to identify potential hazards in your area. This can include things like flooding, tornadoes, and earthquakes. It's also important to prepare for nationwide civil unrest, supply chain shortages, and a population in panic once war declarations are announced. Once you have identified the potential hazards, you can begin to create a plan of action. One important aspect of emergency preparedness is having a disaster supply kit. This should include things like water, non-perishable food, a first aid kit, a flashlight, and a battery-operated radio. It is also important to have extra medication, important documents, and cash on hand. You should keep your disaster supply kit in an easily accessible location, such as a closet or garage, so you can grab it quickly in case of an emergency which requires evacuation. The more emergency supplies you have on hand, especially food and water, the better off you're going to be. Have enough of these items to last at least six months or longer. Large quantities of potable water, purification filters and tablets, freeze-dried food and canned goods will be more valuable than gold in SHTF scenarios. If you can afford it, now is the time to get at least a few solar panels and a solar generator. This will enable you to have a little bit of power for lighting, cooking, and keeping electronics charged. If you're a homeowner, think about hardening your house. You should have 3M security film installed on all windows, even windows that aren't accessible. This is because if there is a nuclear uh, blast, you do not want your windows shattered, allowing radioactive dust to be blown in. The film will also serve as a means to delay would-be robbers from easily breaking in, giving you time to respond. If you have the money, having metal hurricane screens installed will also make it next to impossible for anyone to break through your windows. Harden your doors with armor that will reinforce the strike plate, deadbolt, and hinges on your door, making it incredibly difficult to kick in. Install items like the door club, which will tie the door to your floor, again, making it even more difficult for intruders to break in. Think about your yard and whether or not it provides cover for people that might think about breaking in. Plant rose bushes, cacti, holly, or other plants in front of windows. These will serve as a natural fortification as people typically don't want to fight through with thorns and stickers to try to gain entrance to your home. If you do not own firearms, you better buy some now while you can. I guarantee you that firearms will be unavailable once a nationwide or global natural disaster happens or war breaks out. I recommend three firearms, a 12 gauge shotgun, an AR-15 that can take 5.56 cartridges, and a handgun chambered in 45 or 9mm. These have all been selected for various use cases, and also because the ammo they require is readily available. Shotguns are excellent for close quarters, and you can buy slugs for a bit more reach and a lot more punch. An AR-15 is one of the best rifles for medium and longer range scenarios. 
If you buy an AR-15 chambered in 5.56, then you get the added bonus of being able to also purchase uh, 223 ammo, giving you more flexibility. Lastly, a handgun is great for close quarters and serves as a last ditch weapon in the event you run out of ammo or your other firearms start functioning. Go to a gun range and practice. Study up on safe handling. Buy thousands of rounds now while you still have the chance. It might sound like a lot, but if we're in a prolonged conflict, what you have on hand will be all you're going to get for a very long while. If you're scared of guns, you're going to have to get over it. When people are desperate because they haven't had anything to eat in over a week and their family is starving, they will do anything it takes to get resources. If that means taking it from you by force, then they will do it. It's going to be a lot scarier having a gun in your face while you're being ransacked and unable to do anything to stop them from taking your stuff than it will be to fight back and preserve what you have. Another important aspect of emergency preparedness is having a communication plan. The mean, this means having a way to contact your loved ones in case of an emergency. This can be done by having a designated meeting place or by having a list of emergency contacts with phone numbers. It is also important to have a way to communicate with your loved ones if the power is out, such as a battery operated radio, a ham radio, or a satellite phone. It is also important to stay informed about the emergency situation. This can be done by listening to the radio or watching the news for updates. Pay close attention and follow the instructions of local officials and emergency responders, but also be smart. Remember that the government isn't necessarily out to help you. The government will help itself first and foremost. So be skeptical of advice provided by government representatives. They will deny that there's an impending catastrophe until it's way too late to take action. Look at what the Ukraine government did to its own people. They lied to them, stating there was no imminent invasion by Russian forces. They did this to avoid a panic and also to keep able-bodied people who could be drafted into their war within their borders. When the invasion began, they immediately closed their borders to all men trying to leave and conscripted them. If you think this won't happen here in the States, you're being ignorant and naive. In addition to having a plan and supplies, you need to practice emergency drills. This can include things like fire drills, evacuation drills, and shelter in place drills. You should include your loved ones in these drills so they know what to do in case of an emergency. In conclusion, being prepared for emergencies is crucial to staying safe. By identifying potential hazards, creating a plan, having a disaster supply kit, having a communication plan, staying informed, and practicing emergency drills, you can be prepared for almost any emergency situation. Remember to stay calm, stay informed, and follow the instructions of local officials and emergency responders. Thank you for watching and stay safe.